Welcome to the Broadtech and ProMod podcast, where we unpack the trends in tech, transforming the AV and broadcast world. Today's focus, software-defined solutions and synchronization. Find out how flexible software architectures and precise timing are powering the next wave of scalable, interoperable AV systems. There's a push towards more software-defined solutions, things like virtual audio mixers and you know things like that. So, from your side, what do you see is the difference between like that FPGA way of developing to a more software-defined? My basic commercial logic is that like difference between hardware and software-defined devices or things is like your hardware has a specific life cycle, right? And you you depend on the components. So in case you want to produce another another batch of the devices and the components are not available, you have to update the hardware and uh, manufacture a different set of uh, devices with different set of hardware. And that could be a problem for the legacy software. You have to update the software, etc. So that makes you updating the device constantly in terms of hardware and software according to its life cycle. However, if you have the software defined uh, equipment, it means that you have to up, well enrich only the software with the features. You are hardware agnostic. Yeah. You can uh, just store it in the cloud and update it constantly. Exactly. And hardware and, is not your yeah. problem. And, and from that perspective, what I want to really touch on there is that Hardware's got a life cycle, right? And when you're, you know, from a manufacturer's point of view, you know, if you're investing lots and lots in hardware, you've got, you know, capital invested in there, warehousing and everything else. With a firmware update, you can, you know, you can update those things. And I'm seeing a trend and I'm seeing one of the things, I'm actually working with a client at the moment and I'm advising them on a roadmap that is going software first, hardware complemented. What I mean by that is that the hardware really acts as a control element and the software is what is the driver yeah. and in that way you're extending the life cycle of your products because you know you're not there going i'm still using i don't know vga or yeah. processing or anything else that in five years time might be obsolete yeah you are essentially only using the hardware as a tactile surface to be able to control the software yeah. elements and that seems to me, and then, you know, in, in conjunction with the cloud, you know, remote diagnostics and everything else that, you know, around that and how system integrators are going to change in the future. Today, they need to go out in the field. Tomorrow, they really need to be IT engineers. They really need to be, you know, focused around working around custom solutions so that they can make a bespoke solution for any, whether it's a funeral home, whether it's a sports bar, or a lecture theatre, it doesn't matter what it is, they create that custom solution for them and the software is the driver and the hardware is only the interface as such. Yeah, we also see this tendency that uh, customers, they want to be like more hardware agnostic to deliver more value in software to their customers, which is, yeah, which is a trend I can agree with. Yeah. And, and, you know, going towards that future, I think the other side of it is also the, the benefits of the chip manufacturers, because I think a lot of the chip manufacturers are now trying to uh, incorporate within their chipsets a lot of the functionality that you might be looking for in an FPGA, but you want to, a, a low cost chip that also does video rendering or, you know, do, does all of that and that they're incorporating that in them. So, you know, I, th I think the future is bright in terms of bringing down the cost, the overall cost and also giving a lot more uh, versatility to, to their, you know, to the customers. Age-old problem, synchronization of audio and video. Talk me through that. Yeah, it's very interesting. So if you need to get just audio, yeah, it's not, uh, let's say, very easy, but uh, when you work just with audio or just with video, and you need to decode it and to show on the screen, it's really not complicated. But when you get everything, uh, you need to synchronize it. And especially if you need to meet uh, the latency. Uh, for IP-based, uh, yeah, you can use buffering on the device and you can put second, two, three, and it would work, uh, everything would be fine, but the latency would be awful. 
So, for example, if we're talking about the VIP rooms, where the uh, stream should be delivered with the lowest latency, because some kind of monarchs, <laughs> they do want to see everything like they are behind the field. So uh, the latency should be around 100 or even not more than 250 milliseconds. In this case, you can't just buffer in video, or how to say, you can't just play with buffer. You need to implement carefully the decoding part of the uh, streams. So in, only in this case, the latency would be really low. And it's quite doable for different kinds of projects. For the legacy device, we achieved the latency of around 300 and maybe 60 milliseconds. And for the latest, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was between 100 uh, till 150 milliseconds, uh, if we're talking from glass to glass.